want to encourage you that as you have uh, placed your dials over here, as you are listening to me on Patmark Radio UK, the Lord is going to meet you at the point of your need. Welcome you once again. My name is Tete Patrick, also known as Nanaewa Brantier. Last week we spoke about the kingdom of God, what the kingdom of God really is, what the kingdom of God actually is. If you want to recap, I have uploaded that. Uh, that discussion I've uploaded it on YouTube. Or you can uh, you can contact me on 0741302596. You can send me a quick message. And I will forward that uh, link to you. Today is a continuation of what we started last week. Today we are talking about you. You as a person. You as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Your rights, your responsibilities. We would define the biblical meaning of sin. We would come down to what actually the meaning of sin is. Religion has redefined most of the concepts. Religion has tried its best. It has done a very good job by redefining things. That is causing confusion in the kingdom of God. But I want to assure you that when Christ started his ministry up until now, he said nothing, nothing, nothing about anything except the kingdom of God. You can check the Bible all all the parables that he gave. And the kingdom of God is like, and the kingdom of God is like. His first teaching was the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is with man. The kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. So what happened to the teachings that we are having in our churches today? What happened to those teachings that we have in the Bible? That today we are hearing teachings on things like miracles. I am not saying miracles are bad. But is that the prime focus of a Christian? Is that the prime focus? It is about establishing the kingdom on earth. And that is all what it is about. Tonight we are going to talk about who are you in the kingdom of God. Last week we spoke about the kingdom of God extensively. It is important that we get the concept right. Everything you read in the Bible can be explained. When I was growing up, I I, I was that type of person, and I am still that type of person who asks loads of questions. 
I can ask so many questions, preachers will be enemies because they don't have answers for me. And one of the most answers that I get, one of the most encouraging words, I would put it that way, that I get is that um, there are some things you don't have to understand in the Bible. When you try to understand everything, you can go mad. Now, growing up, I have come to understand that those preachers are all liars. If you want to understand everything in the Bible, you will understand everything in the Bible. Jesus Christ came with a one concept. He came with one concept. The kingdom of God. He didn't even preach about himself. Christ never ever said, worship me. There is nowhere in the Bible that it is written that way. All he said was about the kingdom of God. He said, whatever I see my father do, that's what I do. The kingdom is about a king and his subjects. Now let's 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 check the word subject. The word subject comes from the root word sub, which means something that is under something. In every kingdom, there is a king or a queen, and in every kingdom, there are subjects. In every kingdom, the citizens live by the grace of the king. In every kingdom, there is no democracy. The words of the king become decrees, and those decrees become law for the citizens to live by. There are so many questions about tongue speaking. One day I will talk about tongue speaking. Every culture has got its own language. In my culture, in my earthly culture, which is the Ghanaian culture, we speak tree. In my heavenly culture, because I am a citizen of the kingdom of God, we speak in tongues. One day I will speak about tongue speaking. I have asked so many questions about tongue speaking, and I haven't had the explanation from man until God Himself revealed to me through the scriptures. Now I am a proud speaker of tongues. Tonight we are speaking about who you are in the kingdom of God. And as I was saying, in every kingdom there is a king and there are subjects. Which means anybody who is in the kingdom, if you are a subject to the king, then it means you serve the king. Five years ago, I was on the train from London King's Cross to Stevenage. And someone who lived in Letchworth Garden City. If you are listening to me and you don't live in the United Kingdom, these names will be a little bit bizarre for you. Now, Stevenage is a town 25 minutes away by train from London. And Letchworth is also um, a small town. Like 28, 29 minutes from London. So when I joined the train, this man had left his documents on the train. He was going to Letchworth at somewhere, somehow. And I think he alighted between Stevenage and London. And therefore he left his documents. Now I picked up the documents with the intention to give it to the train staff in case the owner is looking for it i was trying to be a good samaritan but every time every day where i when i get the chance i learn so i had to know where this document or who this document belonged to therefore i read the content of what 
was in the document. Then I started having a change of mind. I started having a different mindset when it comes to Kingdom. Because apparently this man who left his document on the train actually worked for Prince Charles. Who is the prince of the United Kingdom? And then the letter he wrote was addressed to Prince Charles. And the end of the letter, the end of the letter stated, Your humble servant, with his name under it. When I read this, when I read this document, I was humbled. Because on earth we can we can we can reverence princes and kings, but we fail to reverence the king who lives in another dimension, who made this dimension and placed us in it. Where am I trying to get to? The kingdom of God has a king. And he is the king of kings. Last week I was talking about who God is. And I came to a conclusion that he is not a man seated. Seated in the clouds somewhere. Watching everything you do. But he is the source of all power. The source of all glory. The source of all or the source of life. Everything you can think of. He is the source. The source of all imaginations. And he is the king of our kingdom. Now this kingdom, this kingdom made the earth. Special greetings to Nanajwa Unyamiba. You are listening to me at work right now. My one and only wife. I love you with all everything that is in me. All my heart, my lungs, my stomach, my organs, my body, my soul, my spirit, everything. The only person who I will love more than you is God. May God bless you for being there for me. And so ladies and gentlemen This kingdom that I am talking about Decided to extend Its territory Why did they decide to extend Its territory Because the power of a kingdom Depends on the number of territories This kingdom occupied Therefore they made this earth for one sole purpose to extend the culture of heaven on this earth and the main governor as we were talking about last week that God placed on earth to come and execute that purpose was that species called man Therefore, when we read the Bible, (laughs) 
therefore, as I was saying, when we read the Bible, the book of Genesis, anything that you want to see, the source of everything that you want to see is from the beginning. Therefore, we will go to Genesis chapter 1 verses 26. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. I am, I am reading from the International Standard Version. Let us make man, mankind in our own image. Which means that species called man. Let us make that species in our own image. Now, before I continue, I want to dwell on the word image for some time. I can dwell on this word image for the rest of the hour. But I've got a lot to say today. Now, when when you buy a phone, when you buy a new gadget, when you buy something new, let's say a laptop, when the laptop comes in, it comes with a book. And all of you listening to me, I can assure you that you don't read those books. When your phone that you are holding right now came, it came with a book called a manual. Trust me, you didn't read. Now, the manual in that uh, that came with that gadget states everything that gadget can do. What it cannot do and what it can do. How you must treat it and what you mustn't do to that gadget. Now, at the end of every explanation the manufacturer had done, the manufacturer will state one thing. He will say that everything that is written in this manual, if the gadget is not able to meet expectation, which means if the gadget does not function to expectation as it is written in this manual, this is your warranty. Call this number. If we are not able to repair it, we will replace it. Everything comes with a manual. Now, the manufacturer did not put the manual with the gadget to give to you because he or she likes you. He doesn't even know you. The phone you are using, iPhone, laptop, Samsung, any phone. Whatever the name of the phone may be, the manufacturer doesn't even know you. But the manufacturer is doing one thing. He is doing a particular thing. He is putting his image on that that particular gadget. Which means his reputation is at stake. Now, this is what happens. If the gadget is not able to perform to its expectation, it means the image of the manufacturer is at stake. Now, let's assume you have bought an iPhone. The price of an iPhone comprises the image of the iPhone and the uh, and the and the gadget that the gadget that you are going to use. So you come to realize that the gadget itself will cost half the price you are paying. But that Apple logo that they have bitten the side also carries a price, and that is the image. There are phones which work better than iPhone. But iPhones are expensive. Why? Because iPhone has a particular image. And because of that image, they will do anything to protect that image. 
when you when they give the phone to you and the phone is not working up to expectation when you call them and you prove the phone is not working up to expectation and it was not your fault they will change the phone for you or they will give you a specified place a chosen place that you would take your phone for the phone to be repaired for you and that is exactly what God was trying to do here he said let us make man in our own image which means when the species called man was made God tacked that species with his own image which means whatever happens to that species affects the reputation of God who are you in the kingdom I'm supposed to control myself now everything God did everything God created he created an environment before he created that thing everything is fulfilling its purpose the question is is man fulfilling his purpose let me visit that again let me visit that again now God wanted some birds to fly in the air therefore he made the atmosphere and then he placed the birds in there since the time of creation birds have been flying up until now they are flying and up until tomorrow they will continue to fly the purpose of a bird is to fly sink and decorate the atmosphere and they are fulfilling that purpose when God wanted fish in the sea he made the sea and the water bodies and placed them fishes in it there has been no time in history that one fish will say I am fed up of staying in the sea therefore I am coming out of the sea to come and stay in the air or in on, on the land and therefore when God made man he gave man one purpose was to extend the culture of the kingdom of God the kingdom of heaven on earth let us continue reading that scripture I don't want to do so much on the image. I'll come back on it later. He said, then God said, Genesis 1 26, let us make man in our own image to be like us. Let them be masters over the fish in the ocean, the birds that fly, the livestock, everything that crawls on the earth and over the earth itself. Now, I am taking the King James Version. He said, and God says the same Genesis 1.26. Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. And let them have dominion. Let them have dominion. Over the fish. Of the sea. And over the fowls of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This scripture summarizes the purpose of man in the kingdom of God. Man is so important in the kingdom because of earth. Our purpose is to extend 
the culture and the living the ways of life of the kingdom of heaven on earth the 27 says so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them now I was talking to you I was saying I was talking to you about man being a species which means that man came in a form of male and female in one body that is not where we are dwelling on today so we are going to continue God created man to extend the culture now last week I was talking about uh, I was comparing kingdoms on earth and then I was talking about kingdom sending representatives and when the kingdom sends a representative in the form of a governor the kingdom changes everything in the territory and that is why today I speak English I am not English I am Ghanaian speak to him tonight is an encounter I know it's a recording but come on lift your voice lift your voice I want us to take another scripture from Genesis chapter 2, verses 5. Genesis chapter 2, verses 5. Greetings to you, my brother Kobe. You are listening to me from Hartfield. May God richly bless you. Now, Genesis chapter 2, verses 5. I read from the King James Version. He says, And every plant of the field please let me take you from the international standard version I will start from the fall to get a very broad understanding so these are the records of the universe at at its creation on the day that the Lord God made the earth and the skies no shrubs had yet grown in the meadows of the earth and no vegetation had sprouted because the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth and there were no human beings to work the ground now I want I want you I want you to I want you to just check the scripture after God had created everything Ladies and gentlemen, God had created everything. God had created everything. Everything. Bible says nothing grew. There was no growth. Nothing was growing. Because God had not sent rain. Now why didn't God send rain? After he had gone through everything, creating the sky, the earth, the this, the that, the sea, the this, the that. Bible says that God had, God refused to send rain. Why did he do that? He said because there were no human beings to work the ground.
The King James Version said, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no man to till the ground. Now I can stay here for the rest of the hour. As a matter of fact, I've got like 28 minutes. I think I'm going to continue this because I believe I'm not going to finish. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, when God made everything, he withhold, he withheld growth. Nothing was growing. Nothing grew. There was no wheat. There was no cassava. There was nothing growing. Why? Because it wasn't raining. God withheld the rain. And why did God withhold the rain? Because there was no man to work the earth. And that is another purpose of man. What is has been the way a man of God works. Let me deviate a little bit. If you are in a church and there is no growth, check the amount of workers in the church. If you run a business and there is no growth, check your commitment to the business. If you have a family and there is no growth, Man and wife, check your commitments. Because before, until there is commitment, there will be no growth. Bible says God Himself withheld growth. Therefore, if there is no growth in your life, check the way you live your life. Check the commitments you give to your life. Now let's come back. Who are you in the kingdom? The kingdom of God wanted growth on earth. But the kingdom with, with, withheld growth. Just because there was no man to work the earth. So it became important that an ambassador would come in and stand in for God. And therefore God made man. So there are two things here. When you read the scripture Genesis 2 chapter uh, chapter 2 verse 5 One word comes up Just one word One word comes up And the word is management Man was made for two things If you are in the kingdom of God If you are a kingdom citizen You have been made for two things to extend the culture of heaven on earth and to manage this earth. Ladies and gentlemen, if someone wants to be a pastor, if someone wants to work for the kingdom, yes, the the person needs to know the Bible, but the, the person also needs to be schooled on management. Because that is what God wanted us to do. That is what God wants us to do. For there to be growth on earth, there should be management. So many churches are not growing. So many companies are not growing. So many families are not growing. Because of lack of management. The purpose of man on earth is to establish the kingdom. Now, let let us come down to the New Testament. 
Bible says Jesus ah, The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords Isaiah said unto thee A son is born Unto thee a child Come on I love the scripture so much Yes when man fell from this purpose, man lost his way. Man became visionless because he sinned against God. Now let let us let us let us redefine the the word sin. The Hebrew transliteration of sin is rebellion. So for all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Let us replace the word sin with rebellion. For all have rebelled and therefore have uh, fallen short of the glory of God. In a kingdom, the only thing that will cause the king to cast out people out of the kingdom is rebellion. Now someone would be asking, What about all those things that we talk about in churches? Fornication, adultery. Yes. They are the code of conduct of the kingdom. If you are a kingdom citizen, there are some things you don't do. I'll come back there. Therefore, Jesus spoke about the kingdom. When man fell, he fell from this particular purpose. He fell from the knowledge of the fact that he was supposed to extend the glory. He was supposed to extend the culture of heaven. He was supposed to ex- extend the living, the lifestyle of heaven on earth. Now heaven is a kingdom. It's a land in another dimension where there is no time. Now NASA has been able to prove science. Science has been able to prove that the earth actually when they are explaining the Big Bang now, they, they are now saying the earth actually banged from out of eternity into time. You see, they have spoken about the Bible so many years. They have spoken against the Bible so many years. Now they are proving the Bible. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, you see Heaven is a land In another dimension In another dimension And they made this land In this dimension In time In one of my teachings that I will do as time goes on, I will talk about time, why God made time. I need you to keep following. There are there, there is a particular background. If you don't get, you never understand the Bible. And that is what I am trying to preach this evening. Oh. So when man fell, God is so faithful that his word should come to pass. Therefore, God came up with the redemption plan. I have a teaching on the redemption plan of God on YouTube. You can visit it. Yes. 
God brought a savior. The savior came to die. And he restored man. Last week I spoke about the restoration. And to visit it, let me give the scenario. As you are listening to me right now, whatever is in your hand, the position it is, is in its original position. When that thing should fall down, it means that thing has lost its original position. Now, to be able to restore, that is the purpose of Christ, R.E. He came to restore, to redeem, so we can receive, to have a redemption, so that we can repent, for God to receive us. Everything Christ came to do was to turn back, move back to original position. To restore is to move back to original position. So if what is in your hand should fall down right now, and you are restoring it to its original position, you don't put it at where you don't know. You put it at where it used to be Originally And that is exactly what Jesus Christ came to do His death brought about the restoration Which means that man was restored back To his original position And what was the original position? To extend the culture of heaven on this earth and to manage this earth. That was the original position of man. But because there was so much rebellion on this earth, one must be able, one must believe and accept the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ as his Lord and personal Savior. Now, by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, it's not just by mere words. Now, the word baptism, baptism in the Bible, the transliteration, the Hebrew transliteration, the Greek, sorry, the Greek transliteration of the word baptism is initiation. Now, when you join a cult, they initiate you. When you go to a God, they initiate you. The same way, when you join the school of thought of Jesus Christ, you have to be initiated into it. And that is called baptism. Baptism is a broad topic that religion has placed down into just pouring water on a person's head. Religion is a killer God. I was at work and they asked me. I was filling a form. And they asked me the type of religion. If I am Christian, if I am Muslim, I said none of the above. Why? Because I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Christianity is a religion and it kills. Religion has has redefined all these things. That if you go and they emerge you in water, then that is it. Nothing is taught about the kingdom of God. But for you to be able to be initiated into the citizenship. See, even in the United Kingdom, before you can be given a British passport, you go and write life in Britain. 
exam. After writing life in Britain, life life in Britain examination, they will be make they will make you sing the national anthem. But when you are being initiated in the kingdom of God, religion will tell you that just come, we'll put you in water, and that is it. That is a lie. about the kingdom of God how well do you know how well do you know your king how well do you know your purpose in the kingdom now religion has lowered lowered heaven to church going the, the moment you go to church you will make it to heaven and who even said you are going to heaven Jesus never prayed for us to go to heaven. He said, this is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father who is in the distant land heaven, hallowed be your name because you are the king. Thy kingdom come. He never prayed that we will come into your kingdom. He said, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus was extending the culture of heaven upon the earth. Let your will be done. From the beginning I said one thing The words of the king The words of the king Become law Which means the will of the king Is what the people live by Ladies and gentlemen Hear my voice this evening I am the voice Calling from the wilderness In our time And I am telling you Jesus himself The king himself He said let your will be done on earth As it is in heaven How come are we How then are we trying to go to heaven When we haven't even been able to establish his will on earth As you are listening to me right now How many churches have told you to establish the purpose of God on earth All they tell you is to pay your tithe I am not saying paying tithe is bad Listen to me, I have a teaching on tight payments Which one day I'll bring But that is not the only thing The purpose of God Is for you to establish the kingdom of heaven Upon the earth Your will be done on earth As it is in heaven Before he said give us this day our daily bread You know the reason why he said those things like that He arranged the prayers because It is emphatically clear That when you are a kingdom citizen And you are living and establishing the kingdom on this earth Your kingdom world has no choice but to look after you Therefore when you are establishing the will of the king Upon this territory that he has made Ladies and gentlemen let me tell you and listen and understand That he would have no other choice But to give you your daily bread Let your kingdom come Let your will be done on earth As it is in heaven Now you give us this day Our daily bread Let us concentrate on putting Establishing the kingdom On earth 
as we establish the kingdom on earth ladies and gentlemen as we establish the kingdom on earth our daily bread will be catered for that is why the bible strictly said he said do not think about tomorrow it doesn't mean you shouldn't plan but don't let tomorrow be an anxiety don't be anxious about tomorrow because so long as you are in the will of God so long as you are establishing the kingdom of God on earth so long as the will of God is being done through your life tomorrow will be catered for tomorrow Tomorrow will be catered for. There will be no lack. That is why David, when he was writing the Psalms, everything he wrote in Psalms was about a king and a kingdom. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Why? Because his will is being done in my life. I am being used as a vessel. And therefore, Paul was not afraid to establish. Look, uh, before I finish, I want us to read one scripture. If you are following me, I need you to turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20. The Spirit of God is upon me this evening. The Spirit of God is upon me this evening. If you are listening to me now, or even if you are listening to me later, somehow, somehow, anyhow you are listening to me, I need you to place your hand wherever it's hurting. There is no sickness in the kingdom of God. As you place your hand there, I rebuke every pain. In the name of Jesus. Let every pain be healed in Jesus' name. I wish I had more time. Now as I am saying, let Read 2nd Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20. He said, Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled with God. Let me read it in simple English. King James can be a little bit English B. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verses 20. Therefore we are the Messiah's representative. Ah, Jesus. This topic will be continued next week. He said, We are the Messiah's representative. Listen, if you are a representative of a country and someone slaps you. When you slap a citizen, it will be a court case. But when you slap the representative of a country, like an ambassador, when you slap an ambassador, you are calling for war between two nations. And Paul was emphatic here. See, Jesus was like this. Let the will be done. And once the will is done, then you supply the bread. Paul was emphatic. He said, look, he said, listen. He said, we are the Messiah's representative on earth. Therefore, if someone should touch you, ladies and gentlemen, they are touching a representative of the kingdom of God. And therefore, war is being declared. My country Ghana should go and slap the United Kingdom ambassador or high commissioner. 
if they don't get any correct explanation for the United Kingdom, that is a clear declaration of war. And if I am the ambassador of Christ on earth, don't joke with me. Before I've, I've just got three minutes. You see, when you are an ambassador to a country or you are an ambassador of a nation, everything about you is taken care of by the nation. Your children's school fees, your housing, the food you eat, everything. And Paul was like, we are the representative of the Messiah. Which means we represent the kingdom of God on this earth. In this realm. On this planet. In this world. And therefore the kingdom of God has a duty to provide. The kingdom of God has a duty to provide. They will provide. Provide a man once lead called Elijah. At that point in time, he was the representative of the kingdom of God. And Bible says he was with his servant. And the king, the earthly king at that time, sent soldiers to encamp where they were staying. They surrounded their tents. And Bible makes us understand. I would have read the scripture. But because of time. Bible makes us understand that when the servant went outside, he saw the soldiers. So he ran back. He was like, Master, we are surrounded. And Elijah was like, you have no clue who you are. Bible says he prayed. And heaven opened the servant's eyes. And the amount of soldiers that the kingdom of God has sent to come and protect these two people because they are the representatives of the kingdom of God on earth at that time. The amount of soldiers they amounted three times the number of the earthly soldiers there. That is the type of protection I am talking about if you are in the kingdom. That is who you are as a kingdom citizen. I am not talking about being a Christian. Christian is a religion. And that will kill you. I am talking about seeking the kingdom of God. Seek your face the kingdom of God. And its righteousness. The kingdom of God is what I am giving you this evening. He says we are the Messiah's representatives. As though God were pleading through us. We plead on the the Messiah's behalf. Be reconciled with God. As I was saying, sin described in the Bible means rebellion. But because we have rebelled against God, we can't move with God. As we have a change of mindset and we reconcile with God, we come back to become the citizens that we once were. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. I will continue this topic next week. I am talking about you and the kingdom of God. Who are you in the kingdom of God? Before you will know who you are in the kingdom of God, you must know where and what the kingdom of God is. Then you will know who you are in the kingdom of God. Once you get to know who you are, then you can know where you come from. And it will automatically show you where you are going. The most problems on earth is that man don't know where he comes from. And we have not been able to figure out where we are going. And therefore we don't know what we are doing at present. Ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. May God bless you and protect you. This teaching is going to be on YouTube. Just type my name, Tata Patrick. 
I am a motivational speaker. I am not religious. I am spiritual. I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ is my king. And I work for him on earth. This is my business. Therefore, I manage the business of God well. May God bless you for putting your dials here. Good songs will be continuing. This is Patmark Radio UK. My name is Nanaya Wabrantie. Or you can also call me Tato Patrick. That's my real name. Just follow me. Follow the radio, Patmark Radio. On Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. On Instagram. You can, uh, you can come to our website www.patmacradiouk.org So many things are there for you to read May God bless you for being with me Forgive me for going over my time But stay with me next week Because we are going to talk more About who you are And the kingdom of God Do not believe those religious people See Let me give you one thing before, before I go You know why Christ hasn't come yet He said the message of the kingdom Would be preached to every soul What I am seeing And hearing right now Is the message of religion is everywhere It's not the message of the kingdom Therefore Christ is not coming now Until the message of the kingdom Is preached Join the boat Ladies and gentlemen May God bless you Thank you. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. Bye-bye. I know it's a recording, but come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice.